Good evening and welcome back to Math and Engineering Help Desk. Uh, this video is going to uh, support some of the example problems from uh, Unit 2 Lesson 9 in the Illustrative Mathematics Curriculum to talk about similar triangles as well as um, the similarity quotient which will lead into slopes. So this will, um, this lesson here will uh, include sort of the similarity aspect of it and then in uh, the next video we'll talk about the slope relationship that will develop from this lesson. So um, in class, uh, we talked about uh, with students about the concept of angle-angle similarity. So we said that if we can come up with triangles uh, using two of the same angles, uh, and we just basically create those triangles such that those two angles are present, then we get ourselves similar triangles. So we uncovered that principle tactically, uh, tactically, <laughs> um, using um, Using using the uh, triangle construction, basically what I what I did as a teacher was I asked students to make two tri make a triangle, excuse me, using two angles, uh, 70 and 35 degrees. I said your triangle it doesn't matter how big or how small it is, it must include those uh, two angles. However, I made one on the board, and then the students each made one and they put them up on the wall. Unfortunately, I didn't take a picture of it. I w it would have been cool to kind of see, but the kids realized right away that look, they made all similar triangles. So we found out in summary that. Uh, whenever you have two triangles, uh, and if you can match two of the angles up and say that they're congruent, boom, you got yourself similar triangles. You don't have to do any side length ratios. But of course, knowing that they're similar, you can use side length ratios to find missing information uh, and, and such. So anyway, in this particular lesson, we're going to uncover just another uh, property about similar triangles, and we're going to uh, work through a couple of these uh, problems real quick. So I'm not going to do... Um, I'm not going to do the entire table because you probably already did this in class, but this is sort of the idea here. Uh, if you have triangle ABC, which is 4, 5, and 7 for its side lengths, AB is 4, AC is 5, and BC is 7. Uh, the short side is 4, 5, and 7 all the way up to the long side. Now, if you create more triangles using scale factor of 2, then all you would have here is just you would have a multiplication of 2 to get the new side lengths here. So you would have 8, you would have 10, and you would have 14. Oops. 14 for uh, for those side lengths for the scale factor of 2 and then for 3 you would have scale factor uh, with scale factor of 3 excuse me you would have 12 15 and you would have 21 and then for scale factor of 1 half you would have 2 you'd have 2.5 or 5 over 2 and you would have 3.5 or 7 over 2 so that works out um, with those particular side lengths so you go with that and then um, this uh, example here is going to illustrate a very important property and this is like I said is a sort of a lead up to, to the slope lesson that we'll do in the next video. What we're going to do is we're going to divide the long side by the short side for each triangle and we will uh, hopefully re realize a pattern. So uh, we do long side divide by short side, 7 over 4, we would take 7, divide by 4, and we would get 1.75. Well if I do 14 divided by 8, I actually get exactly the same thing, I get 1.75. And if I were to do 21 divided by 12, I would also get 1.75 and it would just basically work out that I would get exactly the same quotient as long as I'm using the corresponding side lengths of two similar triangles. So I get 1.75 for that. If I were to do the long side divided by the medium side, the long side is 7 divided by the medium side of 5, I would get 1.4 and I would notice that that 1.4 would actually uh, be all the way down as well. So it would not um, you know, just save a little bit of time here. So I get to put 1.4 all the way down. And then if I do the medium side divided by the short side, 5 divided by 4, that's 1.8. Uh, sorry, 1.75, my fault. Um, not 1.75, decimal point, 1.75. And then, um, I'm sorry, 5 divided by 4 is 1.25. Getting ahead of myself a little bit there. 1.25, sorry for that. Uh, and then we would, again, that would find all the way down. So as long as we're using the corresponding side lengths between the similar triangles, uh, we're going to get the same quotient when I divide the two sides. Uh, even if I did it the other way, if I did 4 over 7 for whatever reason, uh, I could get the same thing. So that's th just to undercover this principle, and that's important because when we do a problem like this, this problem is much easier if we can use that property. Uh, sorry, the bottom kind of got cut off. Let me see if I can scroll this a little bit. All right, so here's the direction. Let's do this way. The directions. Uh, we have triangle ABC, EFD, and GHI. They all have, um, they're all similar. The side lengths of the triangle have all the same units and find the unknown side lengths. So this is a good uh, sort of practice problem. And I actually did this with my students. Uh, point D is kind of cut off on the bottom here. There's point D down here. I'll add that in right here. Okay, 
the point be? Oh, there it is. Of course, it scrolled up and, and we saw it, but I'll put it there for now. There's no other information uh, below there for this. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, our job here is to find out all of the missing side lengths, and it's going to be a lot easier to do this if we recognize this principle of the common side lengths being, div uh, being divisible uh, and having the same quotient. So um, we have all three tr similar triangles. We have to kind of go with what we have for information. So uh, when I challenge my students to come up with uh, this information, uh, they noticed right away, uh, most of the groups picked up real quick that you've got two common uh, equal congruent sides in a triangle ABC. So because these are equal, that means that this side here, uh, this long side here, D and long side E, well, they have to be equal as well. And this side H here, which is one of the ones we're looking for, and this side 12 over 5 also have to be equal. So right away, students who recognize that you're looking at two isosceles triangles, remember those are triangles that have the same, uh, sorry, two of the same sides, then you end up getting um, a, a right away a bit of information from that, just which is side H. So side H has to be 12 over 5. Now, some of my students who had just finished up doing dilations and scale factors and similarity in those uh, concept contexts, uh, they tried to attack this problem by using the scale factor principle, realizing, well, hey, they're similar. If I can find out how many times bigger something is than something else, I can get uh, the missing side lengths and use a proportion to solve it. And yeah, you can do that, um, but these scale factors are not as, as nice uh, to use, so it's actually a little easier if you think of it as side length quotients, which makes them a little more sense. So here's what I want to draw your attention to. So we look at triangle um, IHG. So a triangle IHG has uh, two side lengths. I'm trying to do this like this. Um, has two side lengths that are given to us right away, which is 12 over 5. I was in my highlighter, and sorry. Uh, 12 over 5 and 6 over 5, right? So if I kind of realize that I'm looking at side lengths that correspond, basically it's the you know, side that's congruent to another and the base of that isosceles triangle, the base is the third side that's not equal to, I, to the other two. Um, if I divide them, 12 over five divided by six over five, well, that's just, um, that's just two, right? So we recognize right away that the quotient here, the side length quotient is two. And once you realize that, you'll know that that other side lengths, the isosceles triangle and the base, also have the exact same quotient between their two sides, which means if I come up here and I say, well, 4 divided by C has also got to be 2. So if I think 4 over C is 2, then that means that if in order to find C, I got to find out what, what I would divide 4 by to get 2. And the answer here is, of course, 2, right? So that means our C equals 2. And if I use the same concept on the large triangle here, either of these, D or E, we know they're going to equal each other. But if I were to take D and divide by 5, what would I get? Well, again, it's the side length quotient uh, rule that we learned from the other two triangles. If I divide the long congruent side, sorry, um, D equals, uh, I want to write it differently, actually. I want to write D over 5. And we know that that's going to work out to be 2 because it worked out to be 2 for the other triangles. And we recognize that rule that says that, well, if I have two triangles that uh, are similar, the quotients of the side lengths would also be the same. So I can use that principle here to work out the solution here. So if I think, well, D over 5 equals 2, what do I divide 5 by to get 2? And the answer here is, of course, 10. So D equals 10. And at the same time, so does E, because E is part of the isosceles triangle, uh, DEF, which I mean, all the triangles are isosceles. And again, this side here is twice the length of the base. So we use that principle from this triangle and make it a lot easier to find those side lengths instead of using scale factors. Okay, last thing. Uh, this was the cool down in that, in that particular lesson. And this is really a pretty straightforward question. Um, recognizing that these two triangles are similar is important to, especially when we get to the slope lesson, which, was, which this cool down actually segues perfectly into. Uh, you'll see that there's a triangle here that's got a height of 2.1 or a vertical line of 2.1 and a horizontal line of 1.4. And then over here, you got an A over a B. Well, A over B is exactly whatever 2.1 divided by 1.4 is. So if I put that in my calculator, put 2.1 divided by 1.4, I'm going to get 1.5 from that, okay? So I can get 1, 1 1.4 out and another half of it, right? So 1.5. Well, so whatever A over B is, whatever A is, whatever B is, I know that they would divide and become 1.5. And as a quick preview, the slope of this line, guess what the slope of this line is? It's also 1.5. So that's a little preview to the lesson next that we're going to be looking at. Okay, the slope of this line is also 1.5.
So anyway, uh, that concludes this uh, particular presentation on similar triangles, and uh, hopefully this was uh, helpful for you to kind of synthesize what you uh, learned from that lesson the, using the examples in here. Hopefully your practice problems go well. And uh, if you got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to be awesome.